Today we're going to learn how to use the Step and Trace programs within BugBiter to look at our assembly program. First, let's boot up the BugBiter diskette. And now there's two ways we can run BugBiter. We can run it in the first 48k of memory by doing brun BugBiter. But if we want to run it in our language card, we choose brun bug loader. Once BugBiter is loaded, you'll see this screen. Now I'm going to break down what each of the sections do on this screen. In the upper right section of the screen, you'll see the program counter, the registers, the stack pointer, and the processor flags. In the upper left corner, we have the BugBiter flags, which are used for breakpoints. We'll discuss that in the next video. In the middle left, we have the stack. In the lower left, we can monitor locations in memory. In hexadecimal and, with the highlighted there, we can represent it as characters as well. And finally, we have the breakpoint area where we control where we can stop during a full speed execution. And finally, we have the command line area where we can enter our commands for BugBiter. Let's start using BugBiter to step through a program, so we'll load the example on the BugBiter disk. So we can precede all DOS commands with a dot and execute them directly from BugBiter. In this case, we'll load the HiRes example using the bload command. It will load that example into 300 hex. You have to remember to press Enter after issuing a DOS command. So let's have a look at the program. The first thing we notice is that uh, various registers are being set. So let's set all the registers into a known state. Uh, we can do that by setting the register name followed by an equal sign and the hex digit. This way we can tell when the registers are actually being changed. Looking at the code, we can see that locations 0, 0, and 0, 1 are modified. So let's put some uh, memory cell points in so that we can see what values they change to. Just type mem and press the return key. I might say enter on some of these commands, but uh, it is the return key. And it will display the hex value in that location and its character representation. Finally, we're at the point where we can start executing our program line by line. We call this stepping. So put in the address and follow it by an S. That's considered stepping. It'll highlight the address before it actually executes it. Pressing the space bar goes to the next instruction. Our next instruction is going to store the value of the X register in location 01. And you can see by the memory cell area that the value 20 is stored. Now the Y register is loaded with 0 and we're going to store that in location 0. Now pretty soon we're going to be storing our accumulator using indirect addressing. And we do that by taking the value that's stored in 00, 0 and 0, 01 and converting that into an address. And then from there, adding y to it. So in this case, 0, 0, 0020 0 turns into hexadecimal 2000 hex. So let's see what's going to happen at location 2000 hex and 2001 and 2002. We can resume our single stepping by just pressing S without actually an address. This will continue execution from the last highlighted section. So now we've loaded the accumulator with FF and we're going to store uh, in 2000 plus whatever's in the Y, which happens to be zero. So now we've stored FF into location 2000. So what is 2000? It's, it's actually the HGR1, High Resolution Graphics Page 1. And if we press the H key, we can see the high resolution screen, and we can see that something has been drawn on the screen. Now if we press T, we can switch back to the text screen. Now we're going to increment Y, and we're going to branch, if not equal, back to 030A. But not equal to what? 
and if you don't specify the branch command will always check the zero flag and it'll branch if the zero flag is set so now the y register is with one and we're going to add that to the value that's in 0001 and 0002 and well we can see that we've stored another ff in the next location note that we can step even when we're in graphics mode now it would be annoying if we had to press the spacebar every time we wanted to go to the next instruction uh, but if we press the return key on the apple keyboard we can go into trace mode and this way it executes automatically to the next instruction. If we were in the text mode, you'd see it going through each and every instruction and the processor flags being set. Now this is going to be kind of boring to look at, so let's speed this up so we can see what the end result is. So we've hit the break command, and so we switch back into the bug biter screen and stopped execution. This concludes the tutorial on how to use the step and trace commands in bug biter. The next video I'll show you how to use the mini assembler and also how to use the breakpoint commands.